Yes. In, in order to try to rein in government, some of us on the centre-right of Britain have actually argued that far from abandoning faith in democracy, we should be using radical direct democracy to try to make the state much more immediately accountable to the people and therefore to try to curtail it and, and in fact do the job that if we had a functioning legislature it would actually be doing itself and that is to rein in the, the ambitions of the politicians and to, to shrink what is defined as public policy. You seem to suggest that actually democracy is, is more radical, direct democracy is actually not the way forward. Um, I'd be interested in your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is a strategy that will uh, backfire. Um, because the principle behind it is, is I think, wrong. Uh, government is not about direct democracy of the people. Government is about, you know, protecting people from, you know, from voting away the minority's rights for the sake of the majority. And any group that you have, uh, you know, you're always going to be able to carve out a majority that's going to screw the minority. And what is the ultimate minority? The ultimate minority is the individual. The whole idea of government is to prevent that, is to prevent any gang or group of going after the individual. It's to, it's to protect individual rights, and therefore shrinking it, I don't think, solves it. And I, and I don't think that there's evidence to suggest, at least my experience in the US, and, and it might be different in the UK, any evidence to suggest that it actually practically works to shrink the role of government. So for example, in the US, there's as much rights violation going on every day at city councils in deciding whether I can, what I should be allowed or not allowed to do on my land, on my property, whether I can open a school, where I can open a school. I was involved in you know, opening a school at some point in Orange County, California. And the, the, the amount of lobbying and taking out city council members to lunches, and the corruption just becomes more intimate. But you know, do, uh, are people going to be upset about that corruption? No, because the next time they want something, they'll use the same tools. So I, I think it's inherently uh, corrupting in size just makes that corruption more intimate, but it doesn't really change the nature of the corruption. <laughs> uh, and I think, and I think it, um, I think you give up a huge amount. You give up the principle. You're giving up the principle of individualism. You're giving up the principle of individual rights. You're, you're accepting the notion that what matters is a majority. The size of the majority, the size of the voting group, you know, shouldn't matter. What's important is the individual. What's important is, is it, are his rights being protected or are they not being protected? Can he use his land any way he chooses to or not? And I think that the size of the group that is violating his rights is irrelevant and, and plays into the hands of, you know, the socialists who, you know, can also organize on the local level and probably get as much influence on local politics because I think, I think in our culture they have them all high ground because our culture has adopted their ethics and therefore they have much more influence with